you can see here it looks rather complicated there's lots of buttons there's lots of menus etc but it's not that bad when you uh, get used to it so let's first of all insert a USB flash drive into my system this is a 512 megabyte flash drive Lexar Firefly and you can see it's come up it's a, it's a removable drive so it's not a, it's not a fixed disk so it's a removable disk and um, it's uh, 512 megabytes so the first thing to check is that you have the correct drive highlighted in this drive selection box here if you've got more than one flash drive then you're obviously going to get them listed here so make sure you pick the right one so now we've got uh, some more options down here and you'll notice actually the numbered one to five with number six being prepared drive so you just fill them in order so the first one is your partition size in megabytes so we'll leave that as max which obviously means the maximum size and you've got the hel helpful um, uh, tool tips that uh, give you a little bit of a clue you've also got some some help down here in this window so if you watch as you hover over each item you get some help there and I should have mentioned you can change the language as well here so if you want Chinese for instance you get Chinese help not everything is in Chinese or French yet, it, or in uh, Spanish or French or German um, because uh, it's not all translated but um, most of it is if you'd like to volunteer to translate any of this um, it's just an any file which you can easily add text to and send me the any file and I'll add it in anyway to get back to the uh, RM prep USB um, so the first option is your partition size the second option is the label volume the volume label of the USB flash drive which can be anything you like but keep it down to 11 characters just for compatibility uh, you have to forgive my voice I'm afraid I'm, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment not the best time to make a video I know uh, number three is the bootloader options now this depends on uh, what you want the USB flash drive to boot to so if for instance you put a, a Windows 7 um, install ISO if you if you unpack the ISO file and uh, are going to put it on this USB flash drive because you want to install Windows 7 then you can choose this option and it will try to load the boot manager bootloader if you're going to put an MS-DOS file system onto this drive you obviously want it to boot to io.sys so you'd use that option this option will put the XP or BartBE boot loader onto the USB flash drive which will try to find the file NTLDR in the root of the system this option will format actually will format the drive as an MS-DOS compatible drive but then after that it will run syslinux to install the syslinux bootloader and this last option which I skipped over because it comes up with this prompt is uh, if you want to boot to FreeDOS which for this demo uh, will do so RM Prep USB actually comes with um, a set of FreeDOS boot files uh, and it's it will automatically if you select that option it will automatically ask you if you want to actually use those boot files so in this case we say we do so we'll say yes and you see down here it's set the uh, copy folder to be the file under RM Prep USB called FreeDOS USB boot so that's actually a folder and in that folder um, will be the FreeDOS files so the next option we got number four is file system and overrides um, you've got FAT16, FAT32 or NTFS now if you select WinPE or XP you'll get NTFS options there if you select FreeDOS then you won't because it doesn't support um, booting from an NTFS file system uh, you can use FAT16 on small drives up to 2 gigabytes or FAT32 um, up to well any size really or up to two terabytes I believe um, you'll notice that on the overrides we have a number of options here I won't go into details on everything but 
basically just choose boot as HDD, which actually puts us two partitions on the on the drive. The main partition, which is the maximum size or almost maximum size, and then a very small hidden partition. And that hidden partition has been shown to help the flash drive to boot on um, some systems which have biases which um, treat a flash drive as a floppy drive or a zip drive unless you put this extra partition on. If it sees two partitions on a drive it thinks oh this is a hard disk I'll boot it as a hard disk and so it doesn't hurt to put this uh, override on um, whenever you are booting from a USB drive. If you choose FAT16 you'll notice that it also um, ticks this option by default and that's usually because um, you're going to boot uh, from uh, a DOS drive. However, not all DOS drives like this option. So um, if I were you, I would try it without that option first, if you, go, if you have to use FAT16. If that doesn't work, then tick the option and try it, reformat it and try it again. Uh, force use of LBA calls is another um, possible thing you can try if you have difficulty booting without the options. For now I'll, I'll use the bog standard um, setting which is this one which I use on nearly all drives that I that I format. Um, and the last option is copy OS files after format. So this has automatically been set for me to the folder which contains the three DOS boot files. I can show you um, a folder um, if we go up here to the tab tabs at the top, you can see we've got Explore RM Prep USB Installation Folder F3. So if you tap F3, you'll see it comes up with the RM Prep USB Installation Folder, and there's a folder in there called FreeDOS. And those are the files that it will copy onto the USB drive after it's been formatted. So we're ready to go now. Um, you can see there's a couple of other options here I'll explain. Set the partition as non-bootable. Um, obviously we want the, the USB drive to be bootable so we'll leave that alone. Okay and the last option is no user prompts. If you tick that you'll only get uh, usually one prompt to start the operation and no other prompts at all. If you untick it then you'll get asked lots of questions just to make sure that you actually are choosing the right uh, the right flash drive and the right choices. I'll leave it untick for now and uh, you can see what happens. So let's go and format this uh, 512 megabyte flash drive. I'll click on prepare drive and straight away it asks us if we want to format it and it tells us it's drive 2 and it's the Lexar JD Firefly which is correct, so I'll say OK. Now I need to move the windows across quickly now so you can see it. So let's come up again with another warning. This one is from RM Part USB, which is called by RM Prep USB. RM Part USB is a command line um, utility which actually does the formatting of the uh, flash drive. So if I say OK, I'll drag the window across quickly so you can see it. So here it is, RM Part USB is formatting the flash drive. That's the command it uses to send to RM Part USB. Um, and here it's copied across the files. I don't know if you saw that flash up then. Uh, copy complete. So if I wanted to go and test this now, I could just click on eject drive and I could go and test it. However, we can do better than that we can test it with the Q emulator button. But I'll just quickly show you what happens if you cl click on the no user prompts button and I'll repeat that to format again. So we still get the first question but then it just quickly formats the drive without asking any more questions. And copies across the files. And that's it, the status down here, copy complete. OK, so let's just test that USB flash drive using QEMU, which is 
an emulator. So it's just as if we were booting from the USB flash drive on a, on a, on a real system, except we can do it with this emulator under Windows. So I'll just click on this button, and the first thing it does is ask us a question, create and use a virtual hard disk. So with QEMU, because we're going to boot a virtual system, that system will usually have a hard disk in it, as well as the USB flash drive that we've just, we're going to use. We want to boot from the USB flash drive, but we might, for instance, want to install an operating system onto the virtual hard disk that's in that virtual system. And if we do, we can um, create a virtual hard disk. So at the moment, I've got a 64 megabyte virtual hard disk. It's, it's very small. Uh, so I'll just use one there. Um, if you wanted to change the size or have a bigger size, then you can type it in there. So if I wanted a two gigabyte hard disk, or I could type it in there. But be warned that that will reformat the virtual hard disk into a two a new two gigabyte empty virtual hard disk and you would lose whatever I had there on my 64 megabyte hard disk so I'll just change that to one so it uses the the virtual hard disk and then the second question is the amount of RAM to make available to QEMU the virtual the virtual system so I've got two gigabytes free at the moment um, and QE uh, RM prep USB has chosen 1000 megabytes to use um, for our purposes in FreeDOS it doesn't matter what you use so I'll change that to 50 but I could leave it at a thousand it, it really wouldn't matter click on OK now it's running QEMU which is done over in this window and there we are so this is the QEMU session you can see it's set the RAM to 50 megabytes and the virtual HDD is called harddisk.image or harddisk.img um, and you can see here the BIOS is signed on, it's the C BIOS which is used by QEMU so it's a virtual BIOS in a virtual system it's booting from the hard disk and, what, and because um, RM Prep USB has set up the USB drive to be a hard disk so when QEMU boots it will treat the USB drive as a hard disk so any formatting you do, if you want to use QEMU in RM Prep USB to boot the USB drive, you need to format it as a hard disk, otherwise it won't boot successfully in QEMU. It might in a real system, but it won't in QEMU. And you can see that FreeDOS has booted successfully. Okay, so we can see here that we've got two hard drives listed, drive C and D. The first one is my USB drive, 512 megabytes, or 478 in this case. And the second one is my virtual 64 megabyte um, hard disk drive, which QEMU has made. And you can see it's booted to DOS, so I'm drive C. So I boot it as a hard disk. So my USB drive, I'll just do a directory here. That's my USB drive. The volume layer, volume is free DOS, which is what I gave it here. And those are my files. And if I want to run a program, so I'm actually running DOS in this virtual machine. So if I want to program, run a program, like check PCI, which you can see is listed here. Then I will run the program, and if I want to use the program properly and list all devices, for instance, it'll list the PCI devices available to me, or if I want to list some mass storage devices, it'll tell me I've got an IDE uh, mass storage device in this virtual system. Okay, so that's, I think, the end of the first section of this tutorial. It's a very, very simple um, method to just set up one, two, three, four, five. Click on six. You don't have to use five. You can untick that and it won't copy any files. It will just format it and give you a clean USB drive. Click on six, prepare drive, and away you go.